Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to look at the data type hierarchy ID. It's complex and you may have to go through this several times, but you will get this. I guarantee it. Now it's a great time to support my channel. Click the subscribe button below. There's a lot to learn in step one. Based on your skill level, you may have to watch this several times, but I'm guaranteeing you, you will understand this. Let's look at the hierarchy ID data type, which is an object. I'm going to create a table that can support this kind of data. An employee ID, its node path, and its manager. I have this caption over here just so we could see it at the highest level who we're talking about. So notice here, I'm going to create a table called test hierarchy. I have my employee ID. I have my organization node of type hierarchy ID and its manager. So it's kind of very easy to follow just at this level. So as you see here, the CEO is the manager of the vice president of marketing and sales. And then this person, the vice president of marketing, he is in charge of these three and the vice president of sales is in charge of these three so let's create that table and now when we're using the organization node of type hierarchy id this should always be unique data so we're going to create a unique index on that field and now we're going to use the insert command and we're going to actually insert some data into this table. And notice successfully inserted nine. Now learning is by failing. So let's do a couple fails here. So the first fail is let's do that unique key test insert. Notice on line 37, the pattern one, one exists. And I'm going to try to use that same pattern for a different employee and a different manager. And remember above, we created a unique index on this. So this right here should fail. And that did our second fail, which I see a lot is a poorly formatted value. Notice here, I have left off the N forward slash. So when you try to do an insert on that, it's going to throw up a hated message that, you know, you did something wrong. So that's that. Now our first look at getting data out of this table, a couple things of interest is remember the hierarchy ID is an object and it has a value, but it has methods around it. For instance, here you see one method called get level. And here you can see that they overrode the two string method to print out this value as a string. And you can see here, the CEO is at level zero and the different levels, one vice presidents, and then the same values of theirs. Notice here, the node value in hexadecimal format, and this is in the string format to string. Now notice here that we have the hex value 68 and we can find a node just by its hex value. We can also find a node by its string pattern. Excellent. Now notice the hex value of organization node. I can do a cast of that value as an integer and it will come back as 23,488. Now this is going to fail. I'm going to cast this node as an integer. Remember this is a individual value. There's no object around that. This is 
a data type of type hierarchy ID. This is an object. Remember, it's got methods in there. I've overrode the string operator. So this will fail because you cannot cast an entire object to an integer. And to finish out step one, we're just going to insert three more rows of data. And that is step one. Let us look at the ancestor method of the data type hierarchy ID. When we select data from here, you'll notice that there is a relationship of the column. And you can see that, that the depth and the manager ID is a manager and he has a manager. So get ancestors goes back to the parent. So if we look at employee ID 10, notice that he is at level one and he has a manager of one. So his parent is zero X is zero. So let's see that execute. So the ancestor so I'm, I'm on 10 right now and I'm going to go back one and that puts me here. Okay, very good. So let's go look at the second one. So the second one, I'm going to be looking at 11. Now notice 11 is at level two. So his parent goes back to 10, goes to here. And then the parent of this one is zero. So notice that when we look at the parent of 11, the parent of 11 is 58. So notice 11 to 58. And that's what this method get ancestor does. However, that employee employee 11 is too deep so we can say get ancestors two. so this is going to go up to the grandparent and this will like go up to the root let's see that happen and let's roll these up so you can see those one two and so you can see here that when we are on 11 11's parent is 58 and then 58's parent is zero and that's what this does so that is the get ancestor this is very important because we are going to be using this in our recursive CTE In step two, we learned about the get ancestor method. And to perform a CTE operation with a recursive action, this is what we're going to be using. So when we execute the CTE, notice we get all the results. Now, this by itself is kind of complex. So I'm going to go step by step and show you how this thing executes. So in step one, we're going to get the base execute and notice that we get the CEO zero. And then we just keep marching our way down. When we find out the ancestor of one is zero, when we execute that, we'll get two nodes. And then we'll take those two nodes for the next one and get it into the next step. So recursively, this is just working its way through. And what I've done here is I've actually shown you on the top here, we say union all, and these are the steps that it actually takes. Ready? I, I do my first one and then I do a union. We could just stop here and see what's executing. So up to level one, we get three people. 
And then to do the next one, I get the next set. And then the last one at the bottom. So that get ancestor is allows us to use recursion. And that is what the CTE is all about recursion in this example. In part four, we're going to be adding new nodes to our tree. Notice that when we do the select command, we get a list of our current employees. We have 12 employees. The goal of this video, we're going to add some new employees at different levels. So you can see here that I'm uh, declaring a new variable of type hierarchy ID and I'm calling it node. And then I'm going to cast the boss man here at 23 as hierarchy ID. And then with that variable node, I'm going to get its descendants and see what its new node would be. Notice its new node would be 231. Let's look at that whole tree again. Notice 23 is employee number 23. If we wanted to put someone underneath him, it would be 231. So when this evaluated, that evaluated to the appropriate pattern. So now we can actually do the insert statement for employee 231. 231. Let's uh, go ahead and generate that. Let's look at our tree. And notice we can see that 231's parent is 23. 23 is 23. In our next example, we're going to be doing the same thing but we're going to be adding another child at the same level. Now, doing this select line like this allows you to do testing. Remember, this column, we, in step one, we created a unique index on this column. So these keys, patterns have to be unique. So when I go look at just this part, and I see that it generates a 232, I need to make sure that's unique. So when I look at that, 232 does not exist. And then I can see that its employee ID and its boss are going to be okay. And notice on get descendant, I'm going to be putting the first child into the first spot. That is why we did the select command to see what the output would become. And the output became 231, and that is a good value. Let's do the insert. Execute. Let's see the data. And notice 231, successful employee manager 23, level 3. This is beautiful. Okay. Now, getting a little bit more complicated, and we are going to go in between. We want to go between two nodes. So right now you see nodes 2, 3, 1, and 2, 3, 2. I want someone to go in between these two. And that is this command right here. Now notice the first thing we have to do is set the node. And then we have to go figure out who's, who we're going to put it between. We're going to be putting it between these two. And then we can use our select command to see if that would generate the appropriate node value. Let's take a look. And notice it generated 231.1. That is in between these two values. That is awesome. So let's do an insert on that. And then let's take a look at our tree. So I've just taught you how to put in nodes put in a, another node, and then put a node in between. And that is the end of step four. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. 
If you have time and would like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate that. Remember, this video may take you several times to understand all the steps, but you will get it. Practice will make the master.